Hey, it's Tommy Coletti. I'm here at the Music Zoo today, and I wanted to talk to you about this special run of guitars that we did. These are Charvel Masterbuilt, San Dimas, Nitro Aged, Relic Graphic Guitars. Um, been waiting for these probably forever. Uh, maybe could fly in a picture of like when I ordered these guitars, Nick. Um, <laughs> so how this whole thing came about. Like, I have a huge history with Charvel. I love Charvel guitars. Uh, we love them here at the Music Zoo. And there's kind of a story about these, and I, I thought it would be cool to talk about, like, guitar shopping in the early 80s. So, in the early 80s, right, no Google, no internet, no cell phones. Um, I had no license. I wasn't even driving at 15 years old. Um, so to find guitars was slightly challenging and you go to your local music store and what they had is what they had and, and fortunately for me I grew up in New York City so I could go to 48th Street and 48th Street in Manhattan had like this amazing selection of guitars and there was Manny's and Sam Ash and Rudy's and like all of these great stores, Stuyvesant, you, We Buy and Sell, um, later on 48th Street Customs, so many cool shops and they all had great things. However. None of them had Charvel at the time in, in, in the early 80s or 80, 81. And, you know, back then, the, getting information or finding out, like, who's got what was a little bit more challenging. So you literally had to either go through the phone book. There's another thing you don't talk about anymore. Go through the phone book and just look at music stores and say, well, I'm going to call these 10 music stores and say Charvel and see what they say, you know, like, and went through the first nine and everybody's just like, we don't know what you're talking about, kid. And I get to the finally find out this uh, shop on Long Island in Hempstead called Grayson's Music had Charvels. So I commandeer one of my friends who had his license and we got in, the, in his 1974 Pinto with the seat that was busted and he had a spare tire holding up the back seat and every once in a while it would fall back because the tire would move and, and I was praying the whole way that I was actually gonna make it there and we get to Hempstead and there at Grayson's is this line of Charvels. And it was, it, for me, it was that Bigfoot moment. I found Bigfoot there. He's, he's, in, he's in Grayson's in, in Hempstead. Um, and, and at that moment, you know, like my love for Charbel like really started and I played through all the guitars that they had on the wall. And then uh, they had a catalog, which was basically a, a photo album of guitars that I guess Grover and Joanne Jackson had taken. Uh, of all different examples of guitars that they've done through the years, which I happen to have that exact uh, photo album, the exact one that I held as a 15-year-old kid when I was in Grayson's, because our friend here at, uh, at the Music Zoo, Gary, uh, worked for Grayson's and he had the catalog and he gave it to me as a present and, and here we are. So it's just, the whole thing comes kind of full circle. Okay, so this was the exact photo album uh, that I paged through as a 15 year old kid uh, to my steaming eyes of just guitar love. And in it is just Kodak photos of guitars that they had taken pictures of after they built them, I guess, so they could show other dealers, like, hey, this is what we're capable of. And maybe they even took these to the NAM show and showed people at the NAM show that were coming in, like, hey, this is what's possible either to store owners or to, to people that wanted to buy them, or rock stars, Gary Moore and Warren D. Martini, and just like the list of people that were going through that place was insane at that time. Um, and I paged through this, like I'm paging through it now, basically wanting one of everything. Um, and I wound up leaving with the Charvel. I actually, I don't know if you could get that, Nick, but I, I have that guitar right now. It's here. It's in captivity at the Music Zoo. Um, and this was, this was life-changing for me, you know, just seeing all this stuff. So it's, it's probably important for us to talk about, I guess, a little bit of the 80s, right? So I lived through the 80s. And, I mean, what was, what was the 80s? The 80s was, everything was about bigger, faster, louder, more colorful. Um, it was the fastest cars at the time, you know, like the Testarossas and the Lamborghini Countach. Um, and hair was as big as you could possibly get it and clothes were as tight as you could wear them and, and as loud colors as possible. So these guitars worked so perfectly with everything else. Music was loud, so like why wouldn't you, you know, like wear a guitar like this and play a guitar like this as opposed to, you know, some 
some maybe more mundane like double cutaway like f hole sleepy guitar you're not going to play your dad's guitar you want to play your guitar um so i jumped into this hook line and sinker and loved every bit of it and as time progressed and and these guitars got more popular because there's more bands that were playing them um Steve Vai, like just the, the, we could sit here and just like rattle through names forever, but there was just so many big names that were playing these guitars originally, where they, even if they went to something else later on, they started with the Charvel, if they were playing like hard rock. Um, the arenas that I went to see bands, they were all playing these, the clubs, the Ritz and Lamores and whatever clubs that I went to in New York back in the day, everybody had one. And this is part of, it was just part of the wardrobe, if you know, like you play hockey you have a stick you have the helmet you put the mouth guard in and you're like you have certain things that you do you know like you wear the jersey this was the jersey this was it um so these you know these guitars are, are uh, sort of a passion project for us here um we've been known to be one of the shops that kind of was at the forefront of the relic aging um we probably been accused of overdoing it. Like our guitars are super relict and ultimate relict and heavy ultra age relict. Um, and we did them with different companies, with Fender, right? We were one of the first guitar stores, I believe, to really just, you like heavy relic wasn't enough for us. We kept going back to them and going, no, 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 that's not it. We, it's more, more, more. Like it was dragged behind a car. Um, we did the same thing for Gibson with the ultra age. We were the first ones to age a Les Paul. And I remember send, sending my Les Paul back and forth to Tom Murphy going, no, 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 it's more. And he'd send it back and he'd be like, yeah, this is good. I'm like, no, 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 it's not good. I'm sending it back again. So we I, I have this thing with aging. And, and I think that the guitars sound more open and resonant and they have more life when there's less paint on them. But I still want a little paint because I still want a little color. I don't want them just completely pl playing all the time. Um, and that's where this came from. So like we kind of married everything together. We married the the graphic with the relic with the old Charvels that are master built by Red Dave and Big Rob and you know like it, 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 if you're a Charvel fan you know some of the the heritage and the people that were there like the Mike Shannons a lot of these guitars are still built by the same dudes that were building these in the 80s so important um, so for all those reasons like this is just the greatest thing in the world for us and we're really happy to have them this is something that's orderable through us so if you miss this one there's another one behind it if you want it you just have to call our sales team to work that out um, we're gonna have a good time with these we love them hey thanks for watching contact our sales department regarding these they're wonderful if you miss this one there's others behind it um, we'll talk to you soon thanks again mm -hmm.